All right, hi class. So we're on day number five. It's our second pool day, and it's the strength in the water. Okay? Um, a lot of times people think this stuff can't be developed, but with, you know, we use kickboards, we use Bredenko boards, we have a few other things, and as long as you change speeds in the water. So your first important point of the day is the water is isokinetic, and what that means is whatever you give the water, it gives you back. So if I move slowly, I'm not going to get much resistance. If I move quicker, I'm going to get more resistance. And if I move quicker with a larger surface, then I can build some major strength. You can actually try on your own. You can take one of those gigantic uh, boogie boards and um, push those, stand on those, jump over those. It's amazing what strength you can get. So that's the first important point. And the second important point is um, make sure you waive your training hard, easy days. Okay? So just a little bit of the lecture before the class. You have two... Um, I've included two kind of charts. One says macho plan and one says uh, TBM, the Burdenko method plan. So years ago, you know, when we were younger, they said you had to work out as hard as you can. You got to work out as hard as you can every day. So that means if uh, I work out for one minute when I start, probably I'll be dead before very long, but I'm trying to get to where I work out 24 hours a day. That's not the case. Uh, they discovered people that were actually injured were in better shape than the ones doing the training because they just pounded them so much. So if you look at that Bredenko method plan and you see some of the numbers on there, those numbers can apply to push-ups. You do one one day, then two, then one, then three. So you see how it weighs, and your chin-ups. It could be days, meaning a hard, easy day, how you plan it, and it could be weeks and years. As an amateur athlete, or when I work with some of the athletes, I don't need exactly numbers, but I do need to know that if I have one tough day, I don't want to have a second one in a row, maybe, but then i got to bring it down and make it a little easier day. If you think of hard and easy days and wave it, then it's very easy. Okay? Now, the other paper has some stuff on here. Um, if you are interested in some Olympic lifting type numbers, I have those numbers too. What I'm going to give you here is more for young people or amateur athletes, but if you need some for uh, what the NFL uses or Olympians uses, I have those numbers, and uh, if you need them, I can give them to you. But so that other sheet, it shows here, you'll see BAL, ST, BAL, Flex. Um, that's how we run our training. So how I get um, to make sure that an athlete has all the qualities of fitness, I'll have a whole week of balance, as you can see by that first week. And balance them each day, five days a week, with another quality. If you want a sixth day, then you would just put on another day of the uh, quality that's coming up. So then you see it. You have a balanced week of coordination, flexibility, endurance, speed, and strength. So what you do then is you pick the exercises to match those qualities, first of all. To match the sport that the athlete's doing. To match the talent of the athlete, the level of the athlete, the time of year, all of that. Then, with that type of periodization, then putting in the wave, making them hard, easy days, you make the perfect athlete. You know they have all the qualities, they are balanced. Okay? Then, so it, the next line says the waving, which we've talked about. Then I just put a few things in um, on what a lot of people like to do, the jumping, the, uh, the power moves, and a little bit of weightlifting. So, first in jumps, if you want someone to jump higher, you can start with just jumping on the ground. They can jump vertical, they can jump along the ground, forward, backward, side to side. Then you can add a little bit of weight to them or surgical tubing. And then they do depth jumps, pure plyometrics, where you drop down and then um, make a movement. Okay? Um, second thing talks about weights a little, and you can see uh, what we have there, acclimatization, speed endurance, hypotrophy, uh, max strength, power. Um, Acclimatization means, you know, we've all done this. You want to start your exercise uh, off-season. If you're coming in, you want to start off, you go really hard, and the next day you're so sore you don't want to do anything. I always joke with saying, you go in, you do one or two repetitions, one or two push-ups, one or two chin-ups, one or two squats, something like that, then you can come back to fight the next day. Once your body gets used to it, then it's a lot easier. But then once you're into it, speed and uh, strength endurance first, you do sets of 30, so you're obviously using a lighter weight, and you change within each 10 the changing speeds. Then if you want to build some size, <coughs> yeah, <doesn't> that? <laughs> then if you want to build some size, 
then you have three sets of 10. Make sure you have a slow, medium, fast. You want to get really strong, you pick a heavy weight, and you do it also slow, medium, fast. Okay? And then for power, you pick 10, probably at about 50% of your max, and you do them as fast as you can. If you see the person slowing down, whether doing cleans or squats, stuff like that, then you shut them down. And then the last one was power. So power isn't just 50%. You can take 20%, you can take 50%, you can take 50% where you have a static and then a quick move, and then you can do 30 as fast as you can, that's speed, strength, endurance. And that happens in a lot of sports amazingly so. Okay. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, if not, we're going to get into the water.